A slightly more advanced definition for chemistry is that chemistry is a science and that also would lead to a question what is science so chemistry is a science that seeks to understand macroscopic substances by that we mean things we can see with our eyes or things that we at least can observe in some ways which is another way of saying matter macro means something that is very big so in chemistry we want to understand the things that we can see by studying microscopic particles by studying the things that are too small to be seen with naked eyes that will require a microscope to have some ideas about them by microscopic particles in chemistry we're talking about atoms or molecules but there is still a very big question here Chemistry is a science. So, what is science? Science is a body of knowledge. And this is Linus Pauling, who won a Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1954. He was a scientist. But I said science is a body of knowledge. How do we acquire the scientific knowledge? that takes us to what is called the scientific method and it all begins with some kind of observation for example this is an inevitable we are all going to die someday that is an observation we are all going to die right now covid 19 is killing people that is an observation and in science after the observation a question will definitely come up okay so we are all going to die someday is there anything we can do about it is there anything we can do to elongate our lives? So the observation would lead to a question or set of questions. Now this is where science now becomes interesting because scientists would then propose answers or solutions to the question. Those, questions, those answers that are proposed, nobody knows if they are right or wrong. And that is what we call scientific hypothesis. Answers or tentative solutions that we do not know are correct or wrong. So scientific hypotheses are only tentative, possible solutions or solutions to the question that arouse from the observation. But there is one thing about scientific hypotheses that must hold true for it to be scientific. It must be testable something that can be confirmed whether it is right or wrong or another word for that it must be falsifiable or verifiable if you will and how do we verify whether a scientific hypothesis is right or wrong we conduct experiments 
let me give you an example here so the observation i made earlier someday we are all going to die a scientific hypothesis can come up out of that question and the scientific hypothesis is well if you eat a lot of broccoli you can live long maybe longer up to 130 years because nobody has ever lived that long so we have made a scientific hypothesis that if you eat broccoli you will live longer than average human beings how can we test for that we can conduct experiments on that you can find 500 volunteers and divide them into two camps 250 of them they eat a lot of broccoli 250 of them they never taste anything like broccoli and then you study their cells over maybe 10 years and you look for cellular degradations and after 10 years you compare the results from the two camps are the cells from those that consume broccoli are those cells healthier than those that do not if there is a statistical significance between the two camps then those that consume broccoli we can extrapolate that they will live longer because their cells are healthier but there is one very important part of experiments that must hold true for scientific studies the experiment must be reproducible it must be an experiment that someone else must be able to reproduce if nobody else can perform that same experiment and get similar results then it is not a scientific experiment if we find out that the experiment confirms the hypothesis for example if we find out that broccoli makes people live long the experiment but the result will be published and others will try to reproduce the results if other scientists can successfully reproduce the results after several trials and confirmations then the original hypothesis will become a scientific law now scientific laws are usually concise they are not very broad they can predict that oh if you do this you get this so they are they can predict the future but they do not offer explanations on how that law works for example the law of conservation of mass says that matter can neither be created nor destroyed well that is a scientific law but that statement doesn't tell you how the law works it simply tells you that matter can neither be created nor destroyed that is a scientific law For example, if we use the observation that we are all going to die and we are proposing the hypothesis that broccoli will make us live longer and we have tested it on 500 people and it works and that experiment has been reproduced, then the scientific law will be something like 
broccoli will make you live longer. It doesn't tell you how broccoli works. It doesn't tell you why it makes you live longer. So many people will try to see how this law works. Many scientists. So they will throw different things at the law. What about if you eat a lot of broccoli and you consume a lot of red meat? Will you still live long? What about if you eat a lot of broccoli and you drink a lot of soda? All kinds of ideas will be brought in and tested on the law. After all of the data has been gathered on all of these different ideas, what we get is what is called scientific theory. Scientific theory is the highest level of scientific method. Anything that becomes a theory has passed through rigorous experimentation. But even then, the theory will still be tested. People would always test it. Theory is broad because a lot of scientists would have worked on it. It is predictive, like law, like scientific law. It can tell you the future and it offers explanations on how the hypothesis that became law that is now the theory it offers explanations on how it works